بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ناؤ وی کم آن ٹو دی نیکسٹ ویڈیو وچ از آن چیپٹر نائنٹین دس ول بی دا تھرڈ ویڈیو وچ از آن ٹاپک نائنٹین پوائنٹ فور ایفیکٹس آف ہیومنز آن ایکو سسٹمس بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان دا نیم آف اللہ دا موسٹ گریشیس دا موسٹ مرسی فل ناؤ ایز یو کین سی ان نائنٹین پوائنٹ outline the causes describe the consequences of deforestation limited to these effects on biodiversity extinction loss of soil flooding and concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere describe the impacts humans have through number one over harvesting of plants and animal species and introducing a non-native species to an ecosystem so invasive alien species then describe the effects of water pollution then air pollution and then pollution due to insecticides and herbicides and then the last is non biodegradable plastics in the environment in both aquatic and terrestrial ecosystems now coming to the topic of deforestation how does deforestation happen you see deforestation is brought about by certain reasons number, number one is you cut down the forest and woodlands because you want to have agricultural land to feed the growing numbers of people You see, the forests are not going to give you, maybe the, uh, the forest just as trees which are going to provide wood. They don't provide any fruit. It's not a mango orchard. It could be just pine trees. It could be just oak trees. So you convert the forest and woodlands to agricultural land because you have to feed the people. You have to plant rice. You have to plant wheat. You have to provide, uh, plant sugar cane. Then you development of cash crops and cattle ranching. You want to have a cattle farm. You want to have a goat farm. You want to have a dairy farm. You want to have a poultry farm, both of which can earn money for tropical countries. Then commercial logging, which supplies the world market with wood, destroys trees as well as opening up forests for agriculture. So you must know the reasons for deforestation. Why are we cutting down trees? Now, what are the impacts of deforestation? Number one, loss of species. 70% of the world's plants and animals live in forests and are losing their habitats. Yeah, because all the birds which live on the trees, all the insects that feed on the leaves. Then carbon emission. Less trees means less carbon dioxide being turned into oxygen. Then soil erosion. Without tree roots to anchor the soil and increased exposure to sun, the soil comes uh, can dry out. So that is going to result in that soil erosion, which is the soil is going to be lost. Then life quality. Soil erosion can lead to The silt entering the lake streams and other water sources and this will result in flooding because all this you see this is a mountain and all the, there were trees here initially but now there are no trees now there are no trees all this is going to enter the rivers so the bed of the river is going to rise so we say silting up of lakes and rivers so then when there is more water in the summers when the glaciers melt then there's going to be flooding Then reduced biodiversity, plants and animals being killed, less alive to reproduce. Say there were 1 million birds, now there are only 50,000 or 10,000 left. So their numbers will decrease and this will result in extinction. The next topic is over harvesting of plant and animal species. What is over harvesting? Over harvesting causes decline in populations and species. Hunting, fishing and other forms of harvesting are the most direct human influences on wild populations of plants and animals. Most species can be harvested to some degree, but a species is over harvested when individuals are removed at a rate faster than the population can replace them. In the extreme, over harvesting of a species can cause extinction. In over exploitation, we see some protected species are killed for their valuable parts or are sold live to collectors. Then killing predators and pests that bother us or cause economic losses threaten some species with premature extinction. Then legal and illegal trade in wildlife species used as pets or for decorative purposes threaten some species with extinction. Now, what are the main factors for over harvesting is modern technology, introduction to automatic weaponry. Deforestation opens up the rainforest to bushmeat. Now, what is bushmeat? I'm going to just tell you about that. Hunters providing easy access and transportation. Rise in populations. Too many people and not enough food to feed them all. 
the traditional ways lost in africa the traditional ways weren't harmful to the ecosystem and animals in it now the current patterns of global endangerment is or at the other end of the economic spectrum billions live in poverty dollars 1 per day dollars 2 per day as a result unsustainable levels of burning small scale agriculture grazing and bush meat hunting occur wherever these practices help people to survive you see it's the poor people they need to survive so if they can catch an alligator and sell the meat well then that's what they'll do if they can catch a monkey and sell the monkey well that's what they will do so bush meat trade is killing very very large number of animals now what is bush meat bush meat is a catch all phrase for meat of wild animals but it most often refers to the remains of animals killed in the forest and savannas of africa african people have long hunted bats monkeys rats snakes and other other wild animals for sustenance smoked dried or cooked the most provide a valuable source of protein for people in rural communities where farming domesticated animals is too expensive or impractical hunting and selling bush meat can also serve as an important source of income but the scale of hunting is far greater today and has been increasing facilitated by road building in the forest for logging and mining operations and fueled by growing demand in urban markets where comparatively well off customers considered wild source protein a def- delicacy and a status symbol a small international market for exotic meat thrives in europe and the united states as hunting becomes more widespread risk to the environment and public health becomes grave now here you can see some of the figures Cameroon generates a total of 97 million yearly of bush meat trade with thousands of tons sold in the capital close to 100% of mammal hunting is done unsustainably in the central african republic a high proportion of endangered primates are threatened by bush meat hunting in the democratic republic of the congo which is home to the largest remaining populations so it's all very sad that you know so many of the animals are being just for trade for uh, money and there is nobody thinking of uh, the the fact that they're going to slowly become extinct the next topic is introducing a non native species to an ecosystem now these are also called invasive species or introduction of uh, alien species so sometimes called non native species alien species or exotic species are species that migrate into an ecosystem or are deliberately or accidentally introduced into an ecosystem by humans bio invasion introduction of species by direct or indirect human actions to areas where they did not previously exist now this is a very good slide which shows you how uh, native species are the one in blue right and then when you introduce an invasive species which are in red now you see in year 5 how the reds have increased and then year 10 now the reds have increased and the blue the blue ones the native species have become extinct so this is what is going to happen when you have native species and invasive species the native species were all in blue and then we introduced five of the invasive species four of the invasive species and now by year 5 the four have increased to 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 12 and now here in year 10 now there's only the invasive species and less of the native species now here is an example of introduction of an alien species a cane toad was introduced into australia to control the sugar cane pests in the 1930s and uh, what has happened is that the female lays 8000 to 35000 eggs at a time twice a year the eggs hatch in 48 to 78 to 72 hours and sexual maturity by 18 months and life span around 5 years now what they actually do is they take they squirt a poison from their glands on the shoulder when threatened which causes rapid uh, heartbeat salivation convulsions and paralysis now what has it resulted is caused deaths of crocodiles guanas tiger snakes and dingoes Now only a few were introduced in the 1930s and now they are in millions. Now they are becoming a total pest because they're killing the other wildlife. The number of crocodiles are decreasing, the number of snakes are decreasing. Even uh, people's uh, pet dogs they are at a danger because they can if there are just frogs roaming around in the garden then they will of course the dogs can also be uh, be affected. Now it's very interesting to see how in the 1940 where they were 
the area where they were found was only very few and then in the 1960 you see how they are spreading and the 1975 now what has happened 1980 now this is where all the toads are now found and so they are spreading very very rapidly and they do not have any natural predators who are going to eat them plus their reproduction rate is very fast now this is the trouble with this is in reducing new alien species and cause a lot of harm to the native species another diagram showing you the current extent and the potential habitat so how they are going to spread this is good. this is why they are called invasive alien species uh, next topic is water pollution by untreated sewage and nitrogen containing fertilizers which results in eutrophication now this is a very nice diagram showing you first how and first what happened first the fertilizer is spread on the land then it gets washed away by rain and absorbed into the soil then the fertilizer is transported to a lake by an underground river the fertilizer causes overgrowth of aquatic plants and algae in the lake this means that the sunlight cannot reach the bottom of the lake so the algae dies the bacteria decompose the algae taking up all the oxygen making the lake anoxic and this causes other organisms in the lake to die so first of all the fertilizer this is all the fertilizer being applied to crops then the fertilizer being washed by rain into ponds and lakes and then the fertilizer which is nitrates causing increased growth of algae algae is microscopic uh, plants and they will cover the surface of this pond or this lake so this is all that covering it and this means that the sunlight cannot reach the bottom of the lake and also some of the algae starts to die and this algae goes and falls to the bottom of the pond now there are say 1 million bacteria in the pond now there will be 2 million bacteria in the pond so the bacteria are going to grow increase that is called biochemical oxygen demand bod so as the bacteria increase they respire and use up the existing oxygen in the water so when the oxygen decreases the other plants are going to start to die the fish are going to die so this is how eutrophication takes place another diagram explaining this in a little simpler manner if for some of you it becomes difficult uh, number 1 there is nutrient load up excessive nutrients from fertilizers are flushed from the land into rivers or lakes by rain water number 2 plants flourish these pollutants cause aquatic plant growth of algae duckweed and other plants because you see nitrate acts as a fertilizer more the nitrate more the roots take in nitrates more proteins can be made so there's going to be more growth Number 3 algal blooms oxygen is depleted algal blooms preventing sunlight reaching other plants the plants die and oxygen in the water is depleted Number 4 decomposition further depletes oxygen dead plants are broken down by bacteria decomposes using up even more oxygen so basically the number of bacteria increase the number of bacteria increase so the number of bacteria are going to be in millions now first they were say 2 million now there will be 20 million so number of bacteria increase Number 5 is death of the ecosystem oxygen levels reach a point where no life is possible fish and other organisms die so this is a very basic and very simple explanation and i hope this becomes clear to you all now if you look at the syllabus you know what did we just now cover we said water pollution by untreated sewage and nitrogen fertilizer increased availability of nitrate and ions how but the fertilizer is washed into lakes and rivers and the untreated sewage also has nitrates and uh, nitrates and phosphates detergents so increased growth of producers the algae increased decomposition after death of producers then increased aerobic respiration by decomposers then reduction in the dissolved oxygen then death of organism requiring dissolved oxygen in the water like the fish they need the dissolved oxygen in the water So please understand whenever you do a topic then go back on to the syllabus and see did you cover all this did you understand all these points if you didn't then you need to be very clear on it you need to read up on something or it or you know you need to search it in the google search you need to figure it out what is not clear to you the next topic is air pollution by greenhouse gases which is carbon dioxide and methane these are the two greenhouse gases that we have to talk about and how does this all contribute to global warming now first let's understand the whole concept of greenhouse gases 
You see, the sun has the incoming energy, right? Everybody should be clear on that. And then there is the outgoing energy. So there is the incoming energy and there is the outgoing energy. But then there are some trapped energy. Now in this area, in this area, there is some trapped energy. And that is because of the greenhouse gases, which actually hit the greenhouse gases and then they are reflected back. Now, but if these greenhouse gases increase, then there's going to be resulting in global warming. So this is what we have to understand. What is greenhouse gases? Now, this is a very basic diagram explaining this again, the greenhouse effect, is that you have sunlight absorbed at the surface. Then you have reflected back to space by the atmosphere. Then you have sunlight reflected by the surface. Then you have the greenhouse gases which trap the heat from the sun. Now, the human activity which release gases are all these CFCs, alloy cane, refrigerator, aerosol, nitrous oxide, gasoline, agriculture, methane, cattle fertilizer, carbon dioxide, oil, and coal when it is burned. So we are increasing the human activities are releasing greenhouse gases. Now, more the greenhouse gases here, more the global warming that is going to set in. I'm explaining this greenhouse effect, you know, sunlight reflected, absorbed by the atmosphere and the earth. And the escaping radiation and the radiation absorbed by greenhouse gases and all the th factors deforestation cfc's oil and petrol engines and greenhouse gases and fossil fuels now what are the global warming effects this is also what we have to know there's changing in rain and snow patterns changes in animal migration and life cycles higher temperatures more heat waves stronger storms more drought and wildfires less snow and ice thawing permafrost, changes in plant life cycles, warmer oceans, rising sea levels, damaged corals. Again, slightly explaining it better, hotter temperatures, more severe storms, increased drought, a warming rising ocean, poverty and displacement, more health risks, not enough food, loss of species. Uh, now, how can we save the world? We can save the world by using more of the solar energy so that we do not exhaust the natural resources, then we can recycle, then we can waste segregation management, then we can plant a tree, we can use a bike instead of going in a car, do not burn and do not cut trees. Now, the next topic is pollution due to insecticides and herbicides. Now, we're going to talk about insecticides and herbicides, which is a sort of a, like a pesticides. Pests are which harm the normal uh, crops which we grow like we are growing a wheat crop so we don't want any other herbs growing any other weeds growing so that's we use a herbicide then insecticide we don't want caterpillars eating the leaves so we'll use an insecticide now they impact health exposure can cause fertility reproductive issues diabetes obesity degenerative diseases cancer asthma depression anxiety adhd then pregnant mothers and children this group is particularly sensitive as exposure can cause disruption to endocrine systems Childhood cancer, neurodevelopment issues, and other disorders uh, drains economies. Pesticide causes illness and injury, resulting in lost work days. Exploitative markets keep farmers on the pesticide treadmill. Crops develop resistant and incorrect use affects the yields. Then decrease in biodiversity. Pesticides have been linked to declines in bees and pollinators, beneficial insects, birds, mammals, aquatic animals, and non-target plants, etc. We don't want to target. We only want to target the caterpillars, but we are killing the other insects as well, which are not actually harming us. Then impacts on water, soil and air, runoff, contaminated surface and groundwater, soil microorganisms and earthworms are poisoned, affecting soil fertility and drift and volatilization, uh, contaminates air, rain, fog and snow. Now it is linked to suicide, uh, monopolization of agriculture systems and corruption signs. So this is all resulting in a lot of problems by the use of these pesticides. There's a word that we use, biological magnification. Now, you have to understand this. The DDT, whenever there's a chemical which we use as an insecticide, DDT in water is 0 0.000003 parts per million. PPM is parts per million. Now, in zooplankton, which is the microscopic animals, it's 0 0.04. But in the small fish, it is 0 0.5 parts per million. Then in the large fish, it is 2 parts per million. And then in the fish eating birds, it's 25 parts per million. Now, this is called biomagnification. So the DDT concentration increases about 10 million times. Even you spray it on the, uh, on the crops, 
then it is washed into waters, into ponds and lakes. So it's in a very dilute amount. It's only very, very little, 0 0.000003 000 000 parts per million. But then as it is going to biomagnify, and the zooplankton is going to increase, zooplankton is the microscopic um, animals that live off these. So it is, they're getting it inevitably because it's in the water. Then in the small fish is 0.5. Then in the large fish, it is two parts per million. And in the fish eating birds of prey, it is 25 parts per million. Then pesticides have a lot of effect on health. Uh, they cause cardiac failure, lung cancer, hepatic necrosis, ovarian cancers, musculoskeletal diseases. Uh, and all these will result in the excessive use of pesticides that we are using in farming. Now coming to the last topic, we're going to talk about non-biodegradable plastics in the environment, whether they are aquatic or terrestrial environments. We're going to talk about non-biodegradable plastics. Now looking at this picture, I always uh, feel very sad whenever I visit a park or a beach or something, and I see how people have thrown everything there. Now this is of course very sad. It is our uh, it is our duty as a as a citizen of any country to really conserve and look after our habitat and our environment and what are we doing when we go for a picnic or we go to the park or we just go around i see a lot a lot of things lying in front of my uh, apartment block in which people have thrown litter here and there and they've had a mcdonald and they've just thrown it they've had hardies and they've just thrown it whereas i think it's a it's a lot of responsibility we'll be answerable to allah for all this littering that we do now, what is biodegradable versus non-biodegradable? You see, biodegradable are peels of vegetables and fruit, and there's paper and there's wood, and non-biodegradable are the plastic bags, the glass bottle, and the cans, which cannot be decomposed by bacteria and fungi. So, fruits, hair, papers uh, are biodegradable. Non-biodegradable plastic bags, hardware, bottles, what can happen to biodegradable waste? It can break down into natural components, exist for a short time, it can be recycled, old vegetables, paper, cardboard. It cannot break down into natural comp components. Non-biodegradable are bad. It exists for a long time, cannot be recycled. For example, tires, plastics, metal, etc. Now, what do non-biodegradable plastics do? They more load on the carbon budget. It causes air pollution when you burn them, then landfilling, incineration, recycling, then fossil fuel based, rapid depleting the fossil resources, then results in land and water pollution. But if you use biodegradable uh, plastics, then less load on the carbon budget. Biodegradation, uh, the key feature, composting, biochemical monomer recovery and renewable res uh, resources based. Every year, daily 1.1 million birds and animals are being killed by plastic. It is illegal to use plastic in a few parts of the world. Two million plastic bags are used every day worldwide. There are few types of plastic that are not recyclable. More than 5 trillion pieces of plastic are floating in the oceans. What is plastic pollution? Plastic, the wonder material that we use for everything, is perhaps the most harmful of this trash because it does not readily break down in nature. In fact, the plastic that goes over the side today may still be around in hundreds of years to foul up the fishing gear, boat propellers and beaches of future generations. Not to mention what it will do to countless generations of marine life and seabirds that eat it or get tangled up in it. Now, this is the third video on chapter 19. And thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And wish you all the very best in your exams. And in the, in the coming year, wish you all the best in the new year. And wish you all the best in the exam which you will take in May, June uh, in 2023.